Call the meeting to order, please. This is the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting for Thursday, May 16, 2019. The time is 7 p.m. Please call the roll. Here. Trustee Peters. Here. Trustee Gallagher. Here. Trustee Pollock. Here. Village Manager Francis. Here. Village Attorney Molina. Here. Also present, Village Clerk Haley. Thank you very much. If you'll please join us for the pledge. I pledge you and welcome to folks who are here with us this evening and to those of you watching at home. Uh, first up, our presentations and public comment. If you'd like to address the board, I ask that you do so from the podium so that folks at home can hear and see what you have to say. Would anyone like to address the board? Okay. Moving on, we'll go to the reports of village offices. First up is the president's report. And I'm pleased to have a proclamation to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Illinois being the first state to ratify the 19th Amendment. Whereas the first women's suffrage association in Illinois was established in Earlville in LaSalle County in 1855, just seven years after the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York, called for suffrage for women. And whereas the first statewide suffrage organization, the Illinois Women's Suffrage Association, was established in 1869, later becoming the Illinois Equal Suffrage Association in 1891. And whereas also in 1891, Illinois enacted a law allowing women the right to vote for elective school offices. And whereas in 1913, Illinois enacted the Presidential Suffrage Bill that gave Illinois women the right to vote in federal and municipal elections that were not otherwise restricted to men under the Illinois Constitution. And whereas with the enactment of that law, Illinois became a major positive influence in advancing the women's suffrage movement in the United States. And whereas on June 4, 1919, the United States Congress passed the proposed 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, stating that, quote, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex, end quote. And whereas on June 10, 1919, Illinois became the first state to ratify the 19th Amendment, leading the way for the amendment to become part of the United States Constitution on August 26, 1920. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Benjamin Sells, do hereby declare June 10, 2019, a day to celebrate women's right to vote and the important role that Illinois played in achieving that right in the United States. Thank you. Um, just an interesting sideline. The, on when we when Illinois ratified the amendment, we beat Wisconsin by one hour. <laughs> so they, came, they came in second. And I want to thank the uh, the League of Women Voters for for this. They they suggested uh, to a number of Illinois uh, communities that we pro provide a resolution or a proclamation like this. So I appreciate the League of Women Voters bringing this very important topic to our attention. So thank you for that. <clears throat> Next up is a motion to appoint Jennifer Hennigan to the Planning and Zoning Commission to fill a vacancy, a term to expire in 2020. Actually, it's the vacancy that was left by Mr. Hannon as he joined our, our board. So I would ask for a motion and a second to appoint Ms. Hennigan. Motion made. <clears throat> by Mr. Galagos. Second. Second by Mr. Gisa. Any comments? Please call the roll. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries, and we're lucky Ms. Hannigan is here with us this evening. So, Madam Clerk, if you'll please do the honors. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jennifer Hennigan, do solemnly swear. I, Jennifer Hennigan, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully perform the duties. And I will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of Planning and Zoning Commissioner. Of the Office of Planning and Zoning Commissioner. For the Village of Riverside, Illinois. For the Village of Riverside, Illinois. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Jennifer. Welcome aboard. Next up, uh, just a note about the new liaisons, the trustee liaisons to our commissions uh, with, the, with the sitting of the new board. They are as follows. The Board of Police and Fire Commissioners, Trustee Hannon, Economic Development Commission, Trustee Peters, Historical Commission, Trustee Galagos, Landscape Advisory Commission, Trustee Evans, Parks and Recreation Board, Trustee Gisa, Planning and Zoning Commission, Trustee Pollock, the Police Pension Board Board, Trustee Hannon, Preservation Commission, Trustee Galagos, and Riverside TV, Trustee Evans. So they'll be liaisoning with, uh, liaising with the commissions and boards on behalf of the Village Board. Uh, a note, I was just asked to remind everyone that our next meeting, June 6th, will be canceled. There will be no Village Board meeting that, that night. And the last thing I have is I just wanted to give a quick report. We, uh, the West Central Municipal Conference just came back from its annual uh, lobbying day down in Springfield. And we, uh, we were able to press pretty hard on a couple very important issues. One is the continuing effort to protect the local government distributive fund that is still being underfunded to municipalities all over Illinois. We're only getting 6%. We're supposed to be getting 10%. Uh, and we haven't gotten that in years. We made the point that should the uh, graduated income tax succeed, that the municipalities fully expect that we will receive our 10% per the original agreement in 1970 of any increased revenue generated by that, that tax. It appears that right now the plan is to have a cap on that tax, which violates the principle of the original agreement made in 1970 to help municipalities be funded through a proper uh, tax structure. The other big issue that we dealt with, uh, and I thank Manager Francis and some of the other village managers around here who really brought this to our attention, is Senate Bill 37. Uh, under Senate Bill 37, what that would require is if a municipality has a part-time uh, or a paid-on-call fire department and 70% of, of municipalities throughout Illinois either have a part-time or paid-on-call fire department. If we were to hire from another municipality a full-time firefighter, so somebody who works full-time at their primary employer, we hire them part-time for employment in Riverside what this bill would require is if they work more than a thousand hours we would have to contribute into the primary pension fund of their primary employment if they work more than a thousand hours in riverside we already pay a pension to imrf so what this bill would in essence do is mandate double dipping it would require us to pay not only a pension payment to IMRF, it would also require us to pay then a pension payment into the pension fund of the primary employer and require that firefighter to do the same thing. So uh, we made, uh, made our objections known to this very strongly and it is our hope that saner heads will, uh, will finally prevail in Springfield and this very unwise bill will be defeated. So we were able to meet with a number of the Senate leadership. We, we talked to every single member on the pension committee about Senate Bill 37. Uh, so now all we can hope is that they will do the right thing down in Springfield and not double tax our residents. So that's all I have, Manager Francis. I just wanted to provide residents and the board a little bit of an update. I know um, what was re recently reported about the Bank of America closing over on Harlem Avenue. And I just wanted to provide residents with a little bit of an update with regard to the strategic steps that the Village of Riverside has done over the past years, kind of anticipating a moment like this in time that would be coming. Um, most recently, uh, the Village had applied for RTA community planning grant last year, and we were actually awarded it. Um, and so what that will incorporate or include is a zoning code update to enhance our ability to attract development. Um, the village anticipates that this project will kick off in the fall, and so it'll facilitate public input. Um, also, the village in 2018 participated in the planning process for the Pace Harlem Avenue Corridor Plan, and this plan recommends mixed-use development 
next to or in close proximity to the Harlem Avenue Metro Station, which also is in close proximity to the Bank of America location. Um, just for everyone's reference, the property is zoned as a B1C, which allows for commercial and mixed use development, which is what we are seeing as a trend for especially transit oriented development. And also the village has done the strategic member measure of just north of these properties of creating a business district to spur once again development on the Harlem Avenue corridor. Um, I just wanted to also provide the board with an update that the village has spoken with a representative from Joan Lane LaSalle um, and requested to meet with additional representatives from that firm that are handling the Bank of America account to discuss the property further. This discussion would include the potential development, anticipated timetable of sale, and what resources they may request of the village. We have emphasized being interested in being part of the process. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they will allow us or permit us to be part of it, but we would like to provide them resources so that to help facilitate the process because we recognize that this is a very valuable gateway to the village. Um, some other information that I just wanted to share for the benefit of residents and the board as a whole is that the Bank of America property is approximately 30,000 square feet, but it is divided by East Burlington. You have a parking lot on the south side with the main building on the north side. Um, it is also located near the Harlem Metro Station on a high average daily traffic state route, which is Harlem Avenue, at a signalized intersection with a curb cut off of Harlem Avenue. And these strengths will afford great opportunities for Jones Ling LaSalle to market the Bank of America property. So we're optimistic. Um, we're trying to make sure we're pulling in all those resources to make sure that they are aware of the village's interest in participating in this process. And as we get more information, I'll report back to the board and to residents as a whole. So if any of you watching out there tonight have friends who are in the development business, <laughs> Manager Francis would be happy to, re to repeat that information for their benefit. So thank you. Or meet with you. Or meet with you, like we, as we've usually done in the past. Absolutely. Um, and as always, you know, if the trustees have any ideas about how we might facilitate this, it's, you know, it's always a very, frustrating thing in terms of the village because there's only so much that we can do, obviously, in, when you're dealing with private property. But certainly it is our, in, our, in our interest, our desire, to try to see that property developed in a way that provides the maximum benefit for the maximum amount of our residents. So I'm glad our staff is working hard to make that happen. Next up is the approval of the consent, consent agenda. It's rather lengthy, but, so please bear with me. On the agenda this evening, approve the voucher list of bills May 16, 2019. Approve the Village Board of Trustees CNADA meeting minutes of May 2nd. The Village Board Trustee regular meeting minutes of May 2nd. Review and file the following. Economic Development Commission regular meeting minutes of March 14. Economic Development Commission meeting special meeting minutes of April 4. Uh, Preservation Commission special meeting minutes of February 20. Community Development Department, April 2019 monthly report. The Finance Department, Fire Department, and Police Department, April 20, 2019 monthly reports. A resolution authorizing the sale or disposal of personal property owned by the Village of Riverside. A resolution authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Riverside, the Village of North Riverside, and the Village of Brookfield that provides for the housing and booking of their arrestees at the North Riverside Police Department facility, and motions to approve the following special event applications. The cruise nights in the Central Business District to be held on Thursday evenings on June 20, July 18, and August 15. The Riverside Swim Club water slide days in Scottswood Common to be held on July 2nd and August 20. The 13th annual Wright Ride to be held on Sunday, August 18th with a rest area at the Historic Water Tower. And the annual Riverside Car Show to be held in Centennial Plaza and Guthrie Park on Sunday, September 29th, 2019. Does anyone need anything removed for, to have discussion? If not, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the consent. Motion made. By Mr. Gallo, second by? I'll second. <coughs> Ms. Evans, please call the roll. Trustee Peters. 
Aye. Trustee Gallagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries. Next up are reports of departments, commissions, and trustee liaisons. Uh, I've asked Chief Weitzel to be here this evening to talk to us a little bit about some of the construction and uh, traffic issues that we're having right now as part of the construction. So, Chief Weitzel. Thank you, Mr. President, Trustees, Manager Francis. I um, kind of review what has been done thus far and then seek any input from the board, trustees, or even our residents might have. So obviously, the, the residents and the board knows about all the construction that's either underway or just about to be underway. So over the last several weeks, either myself and Director Bailey or uh, Kevin Caratko, and in one case, Director Apt, have walked the areas, including the uh, Lot 1, Fairbank, Berry Point, the Center of Town, Forest Avenue, and myself and Director Bailey visited First Avenue to just get a sense of what the projects would be like and how they would be assessing. This last two days ago, uh, Director App and I met and we had a police officer sit from 6.30 in the morning until eight o'clock in an unmarked police car so people wouldn't notice the police there and just observe the railroad crossing to see what was going on there during the rushes. So we had an officer there in the morning and an officer there in the afternoon in just a, a plain police car. The number one issue that's happening at the train crossing is cars getting stuck on the tracks or going around the gates or not leaving enough room for cars to get over. Um, it's congested. It's going to be congested during the peaks of morning rush and afternoon rush, but there were numerous, almost 15 encounters on the uh, day that the officer said that the cars either got confused because they were coming over and traffic was backed up and they didn't leave enough time, or they just got stuck there. In one case, the gates started to come down. The other cases, the trains weren't there, but you know they, they come quite frequently. So I'm gonna be putting out some information um, to our local media and through email and e-flash coming up with that being our number one concern. I'll come back to that. What's happened thus far that we did is we put a standby crossing guard at Quincy and Riverside Road to the end of the school year for District 96. That information has been discussed with the superintendent from District 96, and I believe she's already sent that out to her parents and staff. That crossing guard will be there purpose is to keep the kids away from the construction going on at the train depot. So we're going to force the crossing on the east side and those that have to travel to the first division, we're going to ask them to come towards the police station and then go down Burling so they're staying away from that construction altogether. We've also had a traffic plan for Berry Point and Fairbanks. Myself and Kevin Caracco walked that area last week. That will include type 3 barricades. It will also include our speed trailer there for cut through traffic and it also includes measures for the 200 block of Fairbanks and Scottswood so that the traffic stays on to Berry Point. The, the construction company is told us they will not close Berry Point. At times there will be two-way traffic and there'll be flaggers there, but the street should never be closed in complete that would force traffic to Scottswood or, or Fairbank permanently. We also met with, um, I did at least, with uh, Brookfield and North Riverside's police chiefs to let them know what was going on in Riverside and how it would impact their communities and what they could do to assist us. It really played more of a part than Brookfield than it did North Riverside because of the First Avenue construction. I also met with the Brookfield Zoo's police chief because of, uh, he gave me a schedule for their summer events. They've already experienced large, large crowds on weekends. The bulk of their summer help will not be there until the end of uh, May, but they are deploying <coughs> most of their resources to Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. This year they will have their uh, park safety officers out of the park if need be to direct traffic. That would be something new. They have not done that in the past. So if the intersections were to get extremely crowded, they would deploy their personnel there um, to assist with traffic. More so towards the north lot. The zoo's gonna try to put all of the cars when the lots fill up towards their north parking lots. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, but that's where they're gonna try to force their traffic. I'm also um, going to be putting out e-blasts on this. Um, I've met with the officers, myself and Lieutenant Lara attended roll call to let the officers know what's expected to them throughout the summer months as far as traffic enforcement goes. I met with the manager and at her suggestion we may be doing some enforcement action from like 3 p.m. 
to six or seven o'clock on an overtime basis for specifically for traffic control and high visibility at the train crossing here in the center of town. And I'm certainly open to any suggestions that our residents may have. Um, I'm open to suggestions our board may have on how we could either improve our traffic enforcement or our presence in the center of town. The only issue I have with the permanent assignment is it's very difficult to leave somebody there if calls for service are happening. I can on an overtime basis. I can assign an officer that that's your duty. You don't leave the other squad cars handle the calls for police service. That's the plan for the 3 p.m. to 6 or 7, depending on the um, uh, volume of activity. But I have had residents call already and say that the traffic is really getting backed up right here in front of the Village Hall. That's why the train is having a problem. As you know, probably very soon, Burling Road will be made two ways, similar to what we do on the 3rd and 4th of July. I believe that will alleviate some because you'll be able to make the turn to come down uh, on the two-way street. The contractor told Ed Bailey and myself that what, depending on weather, Berry Point Road could be done within all three to four weeks where all they would have to do after that is put the tiny top coat on, but all the base would be done. That would be fantastic if it could move quickly, that quickly because of weather, that would really make the project go uh, much qu quicker. And then they'll come in and do the top coat and then they'll come in and do the striping. So that's what I have thus far. Um, our CSO has been deployed uh, when needed. For example, we're, we have rescheduled our community service officer for weekend events. We've moved his schedule from weekdays, such as you will see the CSO during RAW, and you will see the CSO out for traffic and crossing enforcement on other um, events that warrant it. So those officers that are just assigned Monday through Friday to community service officer, the schedule allows us to move them as we see fit, and we've already done that on a number of events that are going to happen throughout the year. And the only, the only other events that we have planned are the department is going to participate in bike safety events over the summer, which don't have much to do with the traffic safety, but we are participating in the bike rodeos and the helmet giveaways and some other preventative measures for the younger children when it comes to bike uh, biking. So I will have my bike officers at many of these events too this summer. So, uh, and that would be Officer Mike Panic. You, will, you might see him or one of the other officers at these events. And that's shifting around, that's not overtime. So we're shifting them from patrol to bike patrol and putting them at the events when we can. So um, with that, I would take any, if, if the trustees or anyone sees anything that, you know, I would tell our residents, if you're watching, you wanna email me, absolutely email me if you might have a suggestion on how we could improve our, our monitoring of traffic and our enforcement of traffic because what's happening today before I came to the board meeting, I traveled to First Avenue and there's no doubt that cars are cutting down Forest Avenue to come across the tracks to try to make it to Berry Point to avoid the First Avenue construction. It is a nightmare up there at the closer you get to Ogden Avenue. So there was a long line of cars on Forest Avenue and most of them were coming over the tracks, not going towards Long Time and towards Harlem. So there is that cut through traffic. That's why one of the assignments is going to be Forest Avenue for the uh, 3 p.m. to 6 or 6.30 detail. So I'll take any questions the board may have or any suggestions you may have for us to implement. Trustees, Mr. Hannon. Chief White, so what, what's the timing on that uh, special enforcement? Is that gonna go through the end of the school year or is that, do you envision that going beyond uh, the, the June 10th date? I was gonna initially look at the enforcement going to the end of District 96 school year and then look at how much overtime has been expended and then talk to the manager whether we could continue to budget it. The uh, Director Bailey and Director App is hoping that the majority of the center of town work could possibly be done by July 3rd, a majority of it, if the weather is permitting, and then we wouldn't need that detail anymore. But it could go as, you know, if it doesn't go before July 3rd, maybe it'd go to July 15th depending on weather, but my initial um, sign-up sheet that I'm putting in for the overtime is to the end of District 96 school year. Great, thank you. Anything else? Thank you, Chief Weisel, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, just uh, uh, to follow up on that, especially with regard to the, the, the construction and the traffic issues that have been associated with the green parking lot, commuter parking lot one, and now the work that's being done in front of the train station. A lot of, as, as Chief Weisel, alluded to, uh, most of the problems we're having is because of traffic from out of town. 
And I know that's very frustrating for all of us who live here in Riverside. But I would just ask people, one, to be cautious, to be patient, and to keep in mind that those two projects, the commuter lot one and the improvements that are being made in front of the train station, are, are projects that are going to be a benefit for generations to come. Uh, the, the work that's being done in front of the train station is work that's been needed for a long time to increase safety there. And uh, prom I promise it's just like having your kitchen done. There will come a time when it's finished and uh, we're all going to be very proud of the results and uh, our village will be better for it for many, many decades to come. So be patient and be careful. Next up are ordinances and resolutions. We only have one uh, this evening to discuss. That's an ordinance amending the budget for the fiscal year commencing January 1, 2018 and ending December 31, 2018 for various additional expenditures and revenues. Director John. Good evening. In December of 2017, the Village Board adopted the 2018 annual budget. State statute requires an amendment for any funds that are over budget. I've enumerated these funds um, as an attachment to this agenda. Overall, um, these overages were offset by either other areas being under budget and also revenues coming in over budget. At this point, I am estimating a net surplus of approximately 175,000 for fiscal year 2018. Are there any questions? Trustees, Mr. Powell. Where do we place that in that surplus in the It will be in unassigned fund balance in the general fund um, at the, after the audit is complete. Um, my plan was to come back to the board to see if they wanted to use that for the capital expenditures that they've already um, expended so far this year. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I just like to highlight that the I mean, this is obviously good news. It's always nice to hear the word surplus. Uh, and I, I just want our residents to know that a lot of that can be attributed to our staff and the hard work that they do in, in trying to be frugal and make sure that they get every possible value that they can out of our tax dollars. I know that it's something that Manager Francis and Director Johns are constantly on top of. So congratulations and thank you. As for a motion and a second to approve the ordinance. So moved. By Mr. Gallagher. Second, Second by, by Ms. Evans. Please call the roll. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Galagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Powell. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Director Johnson. We have no considerations this evening. Is there any new business? We do have need for an executive session to consider the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of the specific employees. So I'd ask for a motion to adjourn to executive session, not to reconvene. No final action will be taken. So moved by Mr. Gallagos. Second. By Ms. Peters, please call the roll. Trustee Peters. Aye. Trustee Gallagos. Aye. Trustee Giza. Aye. Trustee Hannon. Aye. Trustee Evans. Aye. Trustee Pollock. Aye. Motion carries, meetings adjourned. Thank you and good night.